So, how do you like the sound of getting your Pokemon to level 100 effortlessly, quickly, and without even having to look at the game? Yeah, this is a infinite, never-ending XP, I guess, let's call it, creative use of game mechanics that will make your life incredibly easy. But, also, how do you like the look of this? Beautiful. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, welcome today as I go over the two best true endgame XP farming methods that absolutely, well, put Chansey farming to shame, though of course Chansey farming remains always the solid option, but that said, it does get better and better and better. So, what's going on here? Well, first and foremost, once you actually beat the game, finish the story in the crater and unlock the end game, complete all the paths, the best way to experience farm in an active manner is to do five and six star raids. Six star raids you don't get until you beat all of the gyms a second time and do the tournament at the school, but five star raids are still ridiculously good. This amount of levels, taking a level 65 Pokemon to level 80, in but a moment, only took an hour's worth of raid farming. That is ridiculously efficient and well worth your time. And you might be thinking, okay, so I have to do five star terror raids, they're a little bit annoying, they're a little bit tricky, it's not the most reliable thing. That is true. However, with just a basic bit of coordination and just a normal team with some normal common sense, they're really no trouble at all. They are balanced for level 75, so as soon as you get a Pokemon in the level 65 to 70 region, well, you can start taking them out quite easily. A few quick tips to actually make that happen is, uh, well, make sure your Pokemon actually has an item. Two particularly good ones in Terror Raids are the Metronome, as you will be spamming super effective attacks over and over and over, so this really ramps up your damage quickly, or the Shell Bell to get a little bit of healing every time you do damage, because sustain is what matters when it comes to a Terror Raid battle, because dying costs you so much time. It is much, much more important to not have to wait for your Pokemon to respawn than it is to get a little bit more damage. That said then, any Pokemon that has a move that both does damage and heals. So Giga Drain or Bitter Blade on Ledge is a prime example and it really works wonders. Other than that, make sure to use your shouts too. Actually get that defense in at the start is really helpful. Any kind of AoE terrain healing like Grassy Terrain will really benefit your team and you just have to play well, ironically considering there's a timer, the more long game, properly set up with good attack and defense boost, and then to start chipping away is much better than going at it with Reckless Abandon and getting one shot. It really is all in the type matchup. And that means not just countering the terror type you're facing, but also making sure the base Pokemon and the moves it will be using don't counter the Pokemon you've selected to take on the terror type. But again, I realize that they can be a little bit intense and you probably want a way to farm experience before you get to sort of level 70 and can comfortably do these. Well, meet the Golduck Ultimate Meat Pit of Grinding Experience and Death. This place is magic. It is located here in the northeast of the map, and what this place lets you do is farm experience AFK. Make your lead Pokemon something that can super affect Golduck throw him out, hop up on the hill nearby, and simply walk away from your switch. The longest I have got this to chain before it breaks is about 25 minutes. The minimum amount of time it worked was about 15 minutes. It really is that good. However, don't just come here and start doing it straight away. Make sure you get an encounter power water going. You can get one from the crepe stand in the main city, so you don't have to make it yourself at a picnic. That will do fine at this one here. And then head back and simply all you have to do is uh, throw your Pokemon out in the lead who can super perfect Golduck and then just watch the experience roll in. Obviously, it's not as much experience as dedicated Chansey farming or the large XP candy you'll be pouring in from your raids, but it is completely passive, requires nothing from you, is 
guaranteed will just happen constantly in the background and because of that it becomes incredibly efficient. And let's be honest, something like this was always going to happen when it comes to having an auto battle. There will always be somewhere in the world that just quite lines up perfectly to, well, let's say, abuse it and end up giving you this gold mine of experience. So, yeah, two little quick pointers, two heads up, the two best endgame ways to farm experience, especially if you are sick of seeing Chansey's soft boiled face. I hope you found this useful, and please, of course, subscribe and hit the bell for more pokey tips and tricks. You will be getting plenty as the days roll on. A like if you've enjoyed this, and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye.